Did you know that when it comes to the negative impacts of mass migration, that's legal and illegal migration, it's not just about the burden on public services or the impact on our culture, but on a very basic level, it also affects the actual budget of our government and our country, which is funded by the taxpayer. Now, since 2020, when the uh, crisis of small boats coming from France escalated, and people like Nigel Farage and 2CTV tried to expose it, and finally the media started talking about it, politicians and governments have been very much focused on illegal migration. That is interesting, even though they're not actually fixing anything. But at least they're talking about it, right? Even though they're not really sorting it out. But why are they not talking about mass immigration? That's legal and illegal. We've now discovered that our lovely government have been uh, paying about 36 billion pounds. This is the cost of uh, mass migration. So that's foreign students as well as legal migrants on benefits. A new report has revealed that the UK taxpayer has forked out almost 24 billion pounds, right? This is actually over the last couple of years, since 2020, on jobless legal migrants who contribute nothing to the economy since 2020. Foreign students also cost the UK 12 billion pounds. Do you remember when the political left and the new liberals said uh, more migration, that's always good because it's gonna contribute to the GDP. Ooh, all the doctors, all the nurses will be foreign. Okay, so what about the rest? When it comes to mass immigration, you could have the few doctors that you want and a few engineers that you're really ranting about. What about the rest who are still coming in they're not contributing to the economy. Forget about public services. Forget about the impact on our culture and our identity. But they have to be on benefits. The research director at the Center for Migration Control, Robert Bates, said uh, these uh, findings show that mass migration is far from the economic uh, panacea that uh, the advocates for, of open borders uh, purport to it to be. The UK is now in a recession and GDP per capita has uh, plummeted through uh, the floorboards. Our policymakers uh, need to shed the illusion that somehow another year of net migration running in the hundreds of thousands will turn the ship around. Robert Bates also said, well, we have had 20 years of limitless migration and those with legitimate concerns were simply told that it is an economic necessity. Well, now we know it was a lie. Well, we knew it was a lie, but now we actually have more evidence that contribution goes down to the economy, the cost to the taxpayer will go up. Robert Bates said, but the fact is that there are now over a million migrants who are making no economic contribution to the UK coffers and are in fact imposing a net drain. The very minimum that we should expect from those being welcomed to the UK is that they should being, um, that they should be rolling their sleeves up and getting stuck into work, but even that does not seem to be the case. Now, it's time for more facts and stats, because an analysis of the, the Labour Force survey by the Centre uh, for Immigration Control also found that in 2020, there were 620,500 economically inactive migrants. 2021, 623,250. 2020, 740,000. And last year, 2023, 711,500 economically inactive immigrants. So don't you dare tell me that by default as a blanket policy, more migration, more economic migration just equals better GDP or economic growth in general. It doesn't work that way. You, it, for, again, as I said, just for the sake of this video, forget about the problems with the culture, with national security, with safety every day, and of course public services, just when it comes to the basic economic argument and debate about cost versus benefit. It doesn't seem to make any sense. Politicians don't care.